So as you may know, there are a lot of options out there for backpacking water filters, and many of them are very, very similar. So in this video, I'm planning to do a detailed comparison of some of the most popular water filters that you'll see backpackers using these days, and hopefully that will help you determine which one is right for you. Now in this video, I'm gonna go over all of the different specs, the features, I'm gonna cover the pricing, and I'll do multiple flow rate tests but I'm not gonna go into a long-term use review of any of these filters. There are already a ton of reviews of each individual filter on YouTube. If you're looking for long-term use review, this is just gonna to be to compare the differences between them. So with that said, here are all of the filters that I'll be taking a look at. Uh, you'll notice that they're all the gravity slash squeeze style filters, so no pump style filters in this video. But starting off, we have the Catadyne B-Free, the Sawyer Mini, the Sawyer Squeeze, the Sawyer Micro, and then we have the Backcountry filter from Aquamira. This is just the filter cartridge. This is the housing casing that it goes in. And then uh, finally, we have the VersaFlow from Hydro Blue. And all of these filters are brand new. I wanted this comparison to be as close to apples to apples as possible. So I purchased all brand new filters specifically for this comparison. Also, because I want this to be a detailed video, it's probably gonna be a longish video. So I'll put timestamps in the description below if you wanna skip around to just the sections that you're interested in. So let's jump right into the comparison. First off, every one of these filters is listed as either meeting or exceeding EPA water filtration standards. Now from what I could find, the Aquamira Backcountry filter is the only one that's certified in meeting those standards, as well as a couple of other standards, I believe. The Sawyer filters, I didn't see any official certifications, but they at least have downloads on their website where you can download reports from some of the independent testing that has been done on these filters. But the Catadyne and the VersaFlow I wasn't able to find any documentation that backs up the claims that they make about these filters. If you know of any, let me know, but I couldn't find anything. Next, all of these filters are hollow fiber water filters and they're all rated at 0.1 microns, except for the Aquamira filter. Once again, it's the outlier of the group, but when I checked their website, they actually don't have a micron rating listed for any of their water filters. And they essentially just said, the micron rating is irrelevant because we're certified. So there's that. Now, just in case you're not really certain what the micron rating is or why it's important, basically the fibers on all of these filters have really tiny holes in them and they're made to act essentially like a microscopic version of the strainer in your kitchen. So it's made to allow the water to pass through but not your spaghetti noodles or in this case, the bacteria. So a micron is just a unit of length and one micron is equal to one one thousandth of a millimeter. So when they say 0.1 microns for these filters, what they're saying is that the holes in those fibers are one ten thousandth of a millimeter in diameter. Now, the reason that's important is that most bacteria and protozoa are in the range of one to 10 microns. So by having a hole that's only 0.1 microns in diameter, theoretically, you're blocking all of that bacteria and protozoa, uh, you're trapping it in the filter and not allowing it to pass through into your drinking water. So that ties into the removal percentage, which you should now be seeing for each filter on the screen. But it is worth noting that some of those percentages, I don't know, I found some mixed information, like the number on the box might differ slightly from the manufacturer's website. I honestly can't remember which filters that applied to, but essentially I just, they're all so close, I wouldn't recommend making a decision based purely on that percentage. So now let's talk about how long these filters are expected to last you. And the shortest of all six is the backcountry filter from Aquamira. Now this is just the standard backcountry filter, but it's only rated at 100 gallons. Next is the Catadyne B Free, which is rated at up to 264 gallons. And then somehow we have this huge magical jump from 264 up to 100,000 gallons, and the Sawyer Mini, the Sawyer Micro, and the VersaFlow are all rated at 100,000 gallons. Finally, the top of the list is the Sawyer Squeeze, which used to be rated at 1 million gallons, and now they just say there's a lifetime guarantee. So essentially, you should never ever burn through one of these. Now getting into the size comparison, starting with the width, the largest diameter is the Catadyne B-Free at 1.95 inches, and the smallest diameter is the Sawyer Mini at 1.38 inches. 
Lengthwise, the longest is the Sawyer Squeeze at 5.75 inches, and the shortest is the Catadyne at 4.13 inches. Now moving into the different weights, starting with the heaviest, we have the Sawyer Squeeze at 2.45 ounces. Next is the Aquamira Backcountry with that required case, and that is 2.16 ounces. Next, we have the VersaFlow, which weighs in at 1.92 ounces. Then the Sawyer Micro, which weighs 1.83 ounces. After that is the Sawyer Mini at 1.34 ounces. And finally, the lightest, we have the Catadyne Be Free at 1.25 ounces. Okay, now let's take a closer look at each individual filter. I'll just kind of talk about the style, the connection points that it has, some of the features. Starting with the Be Free, the top of this filter has a thread basically just like a water bottle would, so you can use any type of water bottle cap with this. And it comes already with this flip top sport style cap so that you can drink directly out of this. And then on the back side, bottom side, whatever you want to call that, this is kind of what really sets this filter apart from the rest of these. And that's that this has a 42 millimeter thread. So this is too large to fit on a standard smart water bottle, unless you 3D print an adapter for it. But it's uh, 42 millimeters. So most of the time you're probably going to buy it with one of these collapsible bags from Catadyne. This is the one liter. They also have a 0.6 liter, but essentially, you know, the filter just threads directly onto the bottle. So you can just collect your dirty water in this bottle, drink directly out of it. The other big factor about that is that all of these fibers are basically just exposed on the back side of this. So to clean it, instead of back flushing, they say that all you have to do is just stick this end in some water and shake it and that will supposedly break loose all of the sediment and clean it and then that should restore your flow rate. So uh, definitely easy to clean and you don't have to carry any additional equipment with you to be able to clean it like the Sawyer filters which I'm about to get into but they come with this uh, little syringe where you have to suck some clean water up into this and then in inject that is that what you would say you you force water back through the filter to back flush these so with that let's actually talk about the Sawyer filters starting with the Sawyer mini this filter has a connection point on both ends where you can connect a hose so if you want to uh, use it as an inline filter you can do that or if you just want to connect a hose to gravity feed like out of a hydration bladder you can do that as well there are no threads on this end on the the output but on the input end it's a 28 millimeter thread so this will screw directly onto the smart water bottles or all of the sawyer filters come with some type of squeeze bag that's that same filter thread so you can collect your dirty water in that screw the filter on and then squeeze the water through and i already mentioned the plunger that you use for back flushing all the filters from Sawyer come with this plunger and then this also has an o-ring in the back side to make sure that there's a nice seal to make sure that none of your dirty water leaks out around the the filter threads so that's the Sawyer mini next up is the Sawyer squeeze the end has the same type of thread that the uh, be free does so that you can use water bottle caps and it comes with also a sport style cap but it's one of these that you have to pop out and back in it's not a flip top which i, I kind of prefer the flip top that comes on the the be free but you know it's really easy to swap those out but the cool thing about this is that it's not just that thread on the top it does have a connection port here that you can use if you uh, want to add a hose to this end now on the Backside, it's similar to this when I say backside, this is the input side. It's similar to the Sawyer Mini in that it has a 28 millimeter thread um, along with the same washer, the, the rubber o ring on the inside. The difference with this is that it does not have already a connection port here for a hose for gravity filtering, for inline filtering. Now, I don't know if they all do, but the particular kit that I ordered came with these threaded adapters that 
will accept a water hose here and then that just screws directly into the water filter. So you can use it with anything that has a hose or you can screw it directly to a water bottle and again it comes with the squeeze bags. So next is the Sawyer Micro and I'm really interested to test this out because it has some pretty mixed reviews online so it'll be interesting once we get to the the flow rate test to see how this works out. But essentially this filter is going to be like a hybrid between the Sawyer Mini and the Sawyer Squeeze. On the output side, it has that same exact connector uh, for a hose on the inside and the threads for a water bottle cap, just like the Sawyer Squeeze. Comes with the same sport cap already attached. And then on the back end, it's actually more like the input side of the Sawyer Mini. So it has the threads for a water bottle or a squeeze bag, but then it also has the hose connector. And once again, it has that same O-ring uh, seal on the inside. So next is the Aquamira filter. This one's very different from all of the other filters because it's the only cartridge style filter. But essentially you just have the housing and the filter cartridge. There's a rubber o-ring around this end of the cartridge just to make sure that it seats well and seals off well with the output end of the housing. Then you can screw the other piece on. And the other big difference between this and the other filters is that there are no threaded ends on this filter housing. So without using some additional adapters, you cannot connect this to the squeeze bags or a standard smart water bottle. It's actually made because it has the quick connect ends on it. It's made to be used with a hydration bladder. So you would use it as an inline filter and that quick connect just snaps directly into the hydration bladder. You would connect your hose to the other end and you're good to go. Good and bad because you're limited to the quick connect, but I really like the simplicity of the quick connect instead of threading things on and off. So pros and cons there. The other big difference between this filter and the rest of these is that because of the design of this filter, for whatever reason, I don't really know why, but this filter cannot be back flushed or cleaned. So essentially, once you run through the, the life expectancy of this filter and it begins to slow down the flow rate, then you're done. You just have to get another cartridge. And finally, we have the VersaFlow from HydroBlue. Now this filter is very often compared to the Sawyer Mini because as you can see, they are very similar in shape and style. The VersaFlow is just slightly larger. But the other differences are that the VersaFlow has the same type of connection on both ends. So at the inlet and the outlet, you have a 28 millimeter thread for screwing onto water bottles. In addition to the thread on both ends, you also have these uh, hose connectors, which on both ends are protected by this little rubber cap. So you can connect a hose on both ends and use this just like an inline filter. The other difference with this filter, unlike any of these except for the Be Free is that you have a little window on the side here so you can actually see the fibers on the inside of the filter. Also the VersaFlow, at least the one that I ordered, it comes with nothing but the filter. So no squeeze bags, no plunger for back flushing, no anything but the filter itself. That is all of the filters. Now let's talk about pricing. Okay, I've rearranged these kind of in order of most expensive to least expensive. And of course, prices fluctuate often. So this is just as of the time of recording this video. The most expensive is the Catadyne Be Free because it's $45, but that's with the one liter collapsible bottle. So if say you already have a bottle that will work with this, then you can get just the filter itself for $25, which would actually put it right here in the lineup. So with the collapsible bottle, $45. Next is the Aquamira filter. Uh, if you get the Frontier Max, which is the, the housing here that comes with that Backcountry Plus, the 1000 gallon filter, it's $40. This is just the backcountry replacement filter cartridge, and this is $20. Next is the Sawyer Squeeze. They seem to sell this in multiple different kits, but the one that I got, which seems to be kind of the, the standard price for these, is $36. Next is the Sawyer Micro, which comes in at $29. Then we have the VersaFlow from HydroBlue. This is $22, and then Last but not least, well, least expensive, 
is the Sawyer Mini, which comes in at just $20. Okay, with all of those differences covered, we can finally move on to the flow rate tests, and I'm gonna do that a couple of different ways. First, I'm going to do a standard gravity filter test. So I'm going to filter three liters of standard tap water through each filter and just see what my flow rate is. Then I'm gonna do a squeeze test, which will actually just be a, a pressurized water test uh, with each filter and see how much more of a flow rate we get that way. And then I'm really interested to know how easily these filters begin to clog up. So I'm gonna take all of these out to a local lake or a river or someplace with some questionable water. And I'm gonna filter a lot of dirty water through these. And I'm gonna come back and do those same standard uh, tap water flow rate tests and see how much of a loss in flow rate there is after having filtered some dirty water through these. Now for the pressurized test, I really wanted to make sure that I was using the same pressure with each one of these, and I wanted that pressure to be constant. So I decided that there's just no way that I could manually squeeze a bag for each individual filter. So I have <laughs> built this lovely high-tech contraption here that basically would just allow me to connect a water filter down here, put in three liters of water, I can monitor the pressure with a pressure gauge and try to maintain that same constant pressure using this pressure bulb. So that's how I'm going to do the squeeze test just to make sure that you know it's consistent with all of these. With all of that said, let's test it out. Now as a quick note, because all of these filters were brand new and completely dry, I did run a little bit of tap water through each one just to saturate the fibers before beginning the flow rate test so that that initial soaking of the fibers would not be a factor in the flow rate. All right, well, since the last clips that you've seen, it's, uh, it's about a week later now because work, but I'm here at the lake and I'm gonna go filter some dirty water through these filters and uh, see how easily they clog up. So I collected water from the lake and I ended up filtering two gallons or about seven and a half liters of dirty water through each filter. After that, I came back home and I once again did a pressurized test with clean water on each filter. Then I back flushed or cleaned the filters and I repeated the pressurized test once again to see how much of the flow rate was restored. So finally, after a couple days of testing, collecting data, putting it all in a spreadsheet, here are the results. This first graph shows the first two tests that I did. So that was the pressurized test and the gravity filtering test both with clean water through brand new filters and you can see the flow rates there. In case you're curious, the pressurized test uh, averaged 2.7 times faster flow rate than the gravity filtering. Next, this graph shows the results from the three pressurized flow rate tests for each filter. So on the left, what you can see there is the initial test that was with clean water through brand new filters. So that was kind of my control flow rate. Then in the middle where it says dirty water, that's the flow rate after having filtered two gallons of dirty water through each filter. And then on the right, that is the flow rate after back flushing or cleaning the filters. And you'll notice that because the Aquamira cannot be cleaned or back flushed, there's no third data point for that filter. Now, after running the dirty water through these filters, I only did pressurized tests. I did not do any more gravity testing but I used the percent difference between the two initial tests, the gravity test and the pressurized test, to give a ballpark estimate of the flow rates you could expect to see after the filters were dirty and after they were back flushed. Now, as for the water coming out of these filters, you would probably have to have the water inspected in a lab to really notice any difference between them. The water was perfectly clear from all of the filters and I didn't notice any strange tastes with any of them. So in that regard, I would consider them all pretty equivalent. So from all of that testing, the Catadyme Bee Free was the lightest of the bunch. It consistently had the best flow rate and you can clean it on the trail without having to carry any additional gear. So I have a feeling that's the one that I'm gonna be sticking with, at least for the time being. But leave me a comment below and let me know which filter you would pick if you found any benefit from my nerdy water filter comparison, give the video a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next one.